Let's discuss what we see when we start asking them to move their jaw. Notice how the jaw deflects laterally. That indicates possible hypomobility of the ipsilateral TMJ. Watch it a couple times. And maybe a few times. See that, see that lateral deviation? The last one is called a C-curve. This one is called an S-curve. Now see that it deviates, overcorrects, and then returns to center. There are a few variations of this. Sometimes it will not overcorrect and just return to center. Classically, this is viewed as a motor control issue. It could indicate a bilateral disc issue. We'll watch it one more time. We are not going to go into detail about the disc. Here's the basic principles. The mandibular condyle wants to have the disc between it and the temporal bone. It tries to get it there. I'm going to say that again. The mandibular condyle wants to have the disc between it and the temporal bone. It tries to get it there. If it can't, then opening will be limited on that side. Thus, if the condyle can't go forward, then the jaw can't open as much on that side. However, there are exceptions to this. When aren't there exceptions to stuff like this in the human body? However, you are not performing surgery, so the specific pathoanatomy isn't vital. We use a signs and symptoms approach. Note what you see and treat it. We'll discuss treatment um, in later sections. Articular disc displacement without pain is not considered medically necessary to treat. If you choose to study TMD even more in depth, then you'll see that stages are described. However, not everyone progresses through every, throughout every stage. They may plateau or improve. Even those who progress through the stages normally have their symptoms improve. Articular disc displacement is like any other pathoanatomy in the body. There can be correlation with pain, but many, many people have TMD without pain.